Hello, Memphis. Back again for Elvis's 88th birthday. Here's Graceland. Here's Graceland. All lit up. It's so beautiful. Yay, I'm here. And here's Graceland.
direction. Yeah, I just discovered that putting these all the way in the real glasses isn't going to work. But now I'm discovering, I feel a little like, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix or something. Like that. Real easy. <laughs> so anyway, oh. Singing and playing some blues. And I can't see. So I don't know where it is. He dropped. <laughs>
to me, that's the moment the movie just kind of kicked into a different gear when you realized what was going on on Beale Street and you realized what it was. It so attracted Elvis. And to have another legendary performer like Little Richard represented in this movie was so important. B.B. is in the movie, Little Richard's in the movie, and bringing Little Richard to life, Alton Mason. <laughs> to Memphis because you were here right around movie premiere time uh, doing a lot of interviews. Uh, yeah, Memphis is a home away from home for me. Yeah, yeah. I love it here. Thank you. all It's a special place. Music and, and rock and roll and blues and gospel That's all kind of, kind of come together. And, and watching this movie, I was, I was stunned by the amount of, of performances by actors in, in roles that were so important to propelling this, the story forward. Mm -hmm. For you, such a pressure for you, this is your first acting role. This is my first movie. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was, for me, it was a really big learning experience to be able to study the history of music, study the artists who paved the way for guys like me, musicians and people who are in this room. It was an honor, you know, to be able to learn about it and pay homage yeah. to such a legend. Now, you're, you're someone that you're comfortable in front of a camera, you're a model, and uh, it's interesting the story about how you crossed paths with, with Baz and the moment in time that brought you two together and how magical that was. Can you, can you tell them about that? Yeah, well, we were in his hometown in Australia and I went there to receive a GQ Man of the Year for Model of the Year. Woo! And um, I remember after I said my speech, I gave a speech about, you know, overcoming fear and um, operating from a place of truth. And Boz came up after and he had his speech and it was during a time where Australia was on fire. So it was a very emotional state that everyone was in. But it also made us want to celebrate, you know, the present and, you know, being under one roof together. So at the after party, the vibrations came up and it was time to dance a little bit. And I remember I was just on the floor dancing with somebody's mama and I was I turned around and Boz is looking at me and I'm like, whoa, because he's giving me this look like he knows something is about to happen. And then I see him go up to my mom, who was with me at the time, and he says, who is that? Your son is amazing. Da, da, da. So my mom comes up to me and she says, Alton, Boz wants to meet you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, what did you do? We've been drinking champagne, what's going on? And so, <laughs> Boz comes up to me, he was like, you are an amazing mover, but do you sing? Do you sing at all? And I'm like, well, I do sing, but I come from a lineage of singers. Like, I grew up in the church. And my great, great, great aunt is Mahalia Jackson. Wow. Woo! That's a big influence on Elvis. And um, I think when I told him that, it kind of hit him. You know, something changed in the atmosphere. And um, he was like, I want to invite you to my theater tomorrow. I'm supposed to fly out tonight, but I'm canceling the flight. I'm canceling it. And I'm like, wait, what? And he said, come to my theater tomorrow at 10 a.m. I walk into the theater and Little Richard is playing. And I think from then I knew what the assignment was. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just a magical moment for me, personally. That's that lightning bolt, you know, that lightning bolt that's such a symbol in the movie uh, of, of things for Elvis, but also for you. When I found out about the Mahalia Jackson connection, I, I know my reaction is like theirs is, like it was for Baz, like, my man, you're supposed to be there. You know? We want a little bit of, know a little bit about you. Like, where did you where did you grow up? I know your dad was a, a basketball player, so you guys were moving around a lot. Well, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm from the West Side. Yeah. Um, I'm from the desert. 
But my dad, he started playing professional basketball overseas. So I moved to Belgium when I was three. My brother was born there and we lived there for about four years. He played professional basketball for like 11 years. So we didn't go back to Arizona and settle until I was like 13, 14. After high school, I graduated and I went to college in LA for performing arts and theater and dance. And then after that, I got scouted and I became a model. And um, my first contract was Gucci. And I went to Rome and met with them. And, <laughs> and yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> you, you were um, uh, breaking records too. I mean, with your relationship with Chanel. Uh, yeah. you, you were the first uh, African American male that Chanel used as as a model. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean that alone is absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he immerses himself. Um, you know, I, I went back and I and probably like you did. I went back and I watched Greg Gatsby and Moulin Rouge, and I don't know that there could have been a better uh, scenic designer, visionary director to tell Elvis a story. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. They both had the same uh, feel of, Energy. there's no such thing as over the top. No. There's no such thing as too many sequins. There's no. no such thing as too much bling. Mm -mm. But for you, you are playing one of the most iconic uh, names in music history. And yeah. there's a, it, you know, it's, it's not the Little Richard movie, but boy, Little Richard, it was so influential and loved Elvis. Oh, and yes. they loved what he represented Absolutely. for his music. What kind of pressure on you to make sure you, Austin has his own pressure. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell a little Richard's story. Yeah, I think it really was just about like surrendering to that world. You know, Boz created a world that was so glamorous, so powerful, soulful, sexy, vibrant, opulent. And you get to just walk into that world and surrender to it. And I think also Boz did a great job with making sure everyone was a part of that world and felt like themselves in that world. Every person in the cast brings something different to the table, if you guys see. And um, to be able to play Little Richard, who was so flamboyant, so free, a young Little Richard at that time as well, who had so much fire in him, it, it became a playground for me. I had so much fun doing it, and I learned so much. You know, when you think of artists like Michael Jackson, Prince, um, Childish Gambino, they all took a page out of the Little Richard book. Yeah, yeah. So I learned a lot. He really is the one that opened the door. Yeah, well, he, I'm glad you're, you're telling his story. There's a moment in watching that clip. Uh, I noticed it the other night. Every time I watch it now, it's what I see. It's, it's the moment that you spin and it's like three or four cuts. You just look like you're just gliding around. The way you spin and the way Baz cut it, it's not just a static shot of you doing it. He progresses around, and it's just this magical moment in the, in the film. Baz is a genius in that way. <laughs> and um, I really appreciate For him to be my first director, it's a, a true gift from God, yeah. honestly. It was so much fun. Now, the other thing I, I found out about you, and I, I love this story, because again, it's about instinct, and it's about you as a performer, uh, an artist, listening to yourself. Um, the costume designer came up with an idea for you of what to wear in that scene. Yeah, And you would think any other first-time actor would say, thank you very much. I know. But you, <laughs> you had something in you that, that just didn't feel... Well, yeah, I remember walking in and seeing him had like a gold suit. It was almost similar to yours, but it was super, super gold. It was nice. Yep, yep. It was fly, you know? Yep, yep, yep. I liked it. I tried it on. I was like, I would wear this. <laughs> but, you know, when I first came out to Australia, we had to do a two-week quarantine. Now, I dived in deeper than I was before doing all the homework that Boz assigned. But when I was in that quarantine, all I had was Little Richard in front of me. So considering the time that we were in, I wanted to take it back to church a little bit. I grew up in church, so I told CM, I was like, you know, this suit is fly, CM, but like, what if we take it to church and put on Sunday's best? You know, little Richard didn't have this much money to wear this suit. And she was like, you're right, so what would you wear? 
And I remember I just went on the racks and I like took it's like a plain, simple suit that you mm -hmm. saw, and it just made it more um, real for me. And um, it gave me an equilibrium. Okay, if I got this suit, I have to show my talent. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to make them remember, remember who I am through my voice and my talent and my movement instead of the gold suit. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it is? Well, I. I know this sounds silly, uh, but it really, at the time, it just seemed like just another TV gig, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they're all alike. And, um, so it didn't, we were clear that, you know, the fact that there's a billion people watching means nothing, really. <laughs> you know. Except for that flute player. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always thought, man, that guy's got that some pressure on him yeah. right there, you know, playing that flute. Oh, and by the way, while I was with Elvis six years, uh, I arranged 53 songs for him. Yeah. And that's, a, that's a big stack of music, so. Because he would hear something on the radio, he would hear a piece of music or a song, and he would come to you and say, hey, I want to do this tomorrow night. And Yes, actually he would have given me all the, the time I wanted, but I, if you want to hear the quick story, so, yeah. uh, the way that all started, you know, I lived and worked in L.A., and when I started arranging music, I, I had been arranging for several years. As a matter of fact, when I was called to come and work with Elvis, um, I was too busy, and I had way too much going on, and I did not want to cancel what I was doing. I, I was doing everything was just fine with me. I was working a lot, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to change anything. So I had to turn it down. But I was very happy that they called me uh, six months later mm -hmm. when Larry Mohobrak uh, left. Um, and I'd been wanting to get back to the piano because I somehow I had a fear that I was going to forget how to play if I wanted to sit here and arrange music. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, I always concerned myself living and working in L.A. with speed. Uh, I, and what it, that really means is don't waste time. Get on it and don't let go. Mm -hmm. That works for me real good. It might work for you. And believe it or not, on the very first day I worked with Elvis, went up there, went to Las Vegas to, uh, for uh, five or six days of orchestra rehearsal. So, uh, went up there, we're doing that, and um, at, at one point, uh, the orchestra took a 10 minute break. Uh, and when they did, Elvis, um, kind of moved his stool over there closer to us, and he started singing, uh, Let It Be Me. <clears throat> and uh, we kind of knew it, and we're kind of picking at it, you know, because the Everly Brothers had a huge hit on that. There were some other records of that. Anyway, um, then when the orchestra came back from their break, um, Elvis just uh, uh, said, uh, maybe we'll work on that tomorrow. I think I want to do that the song in the show. So, as soon as the rehearsal was over, and I, I'm sure that was early, like say four o'clock in the afternoon or maybe earlier, uh, I had all my arranger's tools with me, which is a score pad and a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Extensive. Uh, and I just, uh, uh, when I left the rehearsal, I went up to my room and scored that for him mm. and um, got uh, a guy in the orchestra to get me some copyists to extract the parts and, and deliver them to their place on stage on the music stands. Anyway, I wrote the um, part of the melody in the intro so that Elvis would know what song it is we're playing here. And I had a security guard you know, that could see Elvis, uh, he was at a door right down there by the stage, and he could see Elvis coming uh, toward the, the 
the stage, come in to rehearse. And um, so I told him to step in here and tell me when he's about to walk in. And I kicked off the orchestra when he came in. And as he walked by the piano, I handed him his literature. <laughs> uh, and this pleased the king. <laughs> That's the name of your book, the, and this pleased the king. It, it should be, yes. Yeah. So he just goes, God bless the day. I just walked right in, and the song's on its way. And I told him clearly, I speed, I was, I, there's the payoff mm -hmm. right there. Uh, I told him clearly, uh, anytime he wants anything, uh, we can hear it play by this time tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, that pleased the kids. And, and that, that worked out real well because I arranged 53 songs for him. Yeah. And I guess I did every one of them. Um, uh, I'm sure I did. I kept it up. I, I would make sure it was, you have it the next day. Mm -hmm. He would have given me all the time I wanted, but um, I don't waste time. And, That's right. Uh, anyway, uh, it was very easy. Uh, and we didn't have to. Um, it was real interesting. Uh, I didn't. We didn't have to have conferences or talk about it or anything. Uh, and I know we were walking down the hall uh, one night, going toward the stage to do a show, and he said, uh, "You remember that old song called The Wonder of You?" And I said, "Oh yeah." He said, "Let's do that." Uh, okay. And so you know, I I knew his range. I didn't have to. With, you know, I have to quiz him about that or check it with him on the piano or anything. Um, so that's the way it, it worked. He would just mention a song and say, okay. Yeah. So this is John Daly's event at the Holiday Inn. We just happen to be staying here. So there is uh, Danny Smith, Billy Smith's son from uh, Memphis Mafia Kid. It's Dixie Lack's daughter. And, uh, Memphis Mafia people. And then this is Sally Hodell. Her new book she wrote about Ron Strauss. There's Ron Strauss right there, Elvis's pilot. And there is Sally talking to someone. So if you come to the, uh, if you come to the Holiday Inn during Elvis week or Elvis's birthday, you'll be able to see all this stuff and meet all these people. I figured with the rain and the forecast. And I'll take you in the room where they're selling stuff so you can see all that too. Pretty cool. This is Nurse Tish, her setup. There she is over there. And then there's a little haze. It was Elvis' jeweler. And then they have an auction going on of Elvis artifacts. So there's my friend Cherry going through the bins, the dollar bins. Found lots of goodies in these dollar bins. Coat worn by Elvis. Mirror that Elvis used. I'm looking in the same mirror as Elvis looked in. How cool is that? Sherry, look up. You're looking in, in the same mirror as Elvis. <laughs> Isn't that cool? He looked at his reflection in that mirror. Yeah. Hold on just a second. What's that? This is boots. <laughs> Badge. A wallet. Oh, no. The CDs and, and magazines. Okay, I'm good. <laughs>
of my stuff right here. Just grabbing my stuff from Sherry, my friend. But yeah, if you come to John Daly's thing in August or for Elvis's birthday, and then you could shop in here and get lots of goodies. See all the awesome things for the auction. Buttons. Stand up. Movie poster. Dolls. I'm playing an Elvis movie right now. Okay, I'll be up here talking about it. Okay, bye. Oh. He's singing teddy bear. So just wanted to show you guys around and show you all the, the cool stuff here for John Daly's event for Elvis's birthday. <laughs>
concert albums or seeing a live uh, concert special where Elvis didn't introduce all of his band members. And uh, so we're going to show the portion now uh, from Aloha from Hawaii when Elvis introduced all the band members that he had on stage, all friends of Glenn's here, uh, and all the faces that you will uh, recognize. So let's, uh, and Elvis never failed to do that and to show the respect to his singers and musicians who are on stage. So Larry, play that video. This is uh, Elvis introducing the band here. And the piano is Glenn Hartman.
My name is Olga. We're so pleased to have this wonderful crowd here with us on the front lawn of Grayson. People from all around the country and all around the world. And we also want to welcome those of you watching via live stream on social media at Grayson.com and those of you listening via Sirius XM's Elvis Radio. We also want to extend a special welcome to all of the new Elvis fans. Woo! So many of them that we are welcoming to the Elvis Fan family and those of you who are not with us here at Graceland this year, we expect or invite you to be here soon. If you really want to find out what's happening, the, the movie has piqued your curiosity. There's no better place than to discover and explore than Elvis Presley's home. All right, it's my pleasure now to uh, welcome to the stage CEO of Elvis Presley Enterprises, Jack Soden. <laughs> New Elvis fans, how many people have seen the incredible Baz Luhrmann film? <laughs> We are so excited to have with us here a gentleman who made his acting debut in that movie, please. He played Little Richard. Please welcome Alton Mason to the stage. How are y'all doing this morning? <laughs> My name is Alton Mason. I play Little Richard in the movie. Who here has seen the movie? Okay, okay. How many times have you seen it? A lot! <laughs> it's such an honor to be a part of this family, and we are here to celebrate the birthday of the king of rock and roll. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Alton. How about this incredible cake? The theme, of course, is Aloha from Hawaii, and that is the theme of our birthday celebration as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the record-breaking and record-setting concert event. And we are so pleased to have with us today a gentleman who was on stage with Elvis. Then I need to sweep up and get out of here. So, thank you all for coming. Happy birthday, Elvis! Thank you, Glendy Hart, ladies and gentlemen.
It is now my pleasure to read the official proclamation here on Elvis's birthday from the city of Memphis and Shelby County. Whereas Elvis Aaron Presley was born on this day in 1935 to Gladys Love Presley and Vernon Elvis Presley in Tupelo, Mississippi. And whereas at the age of 13, Elvis moved to Memphis, Tennessee, where his distinctive God-given gifts as a musician and entertainer would find their fullest voices. And whereas Elvis graduated from Humes High School here in Memphis, Tennessee in 1953, and Elvis's incredible talent came from 706 Union Avenue where he got his start at Sun Studio in downtown Memphis, where legendary Sam Phillips created the music that would change the world. Whereas Elvis gave the world hundreds of unforgettable songs from dozens of timeless albums and singles, including classics such as Heartbreak Hotel, Don't Be Cruel, Are You Lonesome Tonight, and Suspicious Minds. And whereas Elvis interrupted his career in 1958 to serve the United States Army. He was loved around the world, starred in more than 31 films and two concert documentaries and several television specials as well. And whereas today, Elvis's unparalleled style and artistry continues to thrill audiences, create fans, and inspire new generations of musicians around the world. And whereas no matter how far away his career took him or how high his fame carried him. Elvis remained steadfastly devoted to Memphis and the city that he loved, the city which inspired him, and the city he called home. Now therefore we, Jim Strickland, mayor of the city of Memphis and Lee Harris, mayor of Shelby County, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim this 8th day of January 2023 as the day to celebrate the life, legacy, work, and 88th birthday of Elvis Aaron Presley. We'd like to welcome everybody back on stage here to cut the cake, and we will all sing happy birthday together. All right, are we ready? On the count of three, three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elvis. Happy birthday to you. frozen this year.
Oh, 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 yeah. 